Hey everyone, this is Art Talk Session 9. Uh, we're joined by another very skilled artist, uh, Pablo Carpio. Uh, you want to say hi to everyone, Pablo? Hello to everyone. Hey, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, a good place that we, uh, we always start off is just kind of uh, finding out what your initial inspiration was to kind of pursue art, like what, what inspired you, like as far back as you can remember, to kind of jump yeah. in and try to make a career out of this. It's, it's something, it's like, uh, I, I was thinking about that like this morning because uh, I can uh, actually tell when was like the first time I, I think about this like like a, a possible uh, way to like to make a living or whatever because I've been painting since, since I was born basically. I, I, I don't have any kind of, uh, nobody in my family is an artist or, or, or anything but anything related to the, to the industry. But yeah, like since I was uh, one year old, two year old, I started like painting everywhere, like in walls, in tables, in the floor, uh, in paper, whatever. And yeah, that's I, I never I, I never quit. I mean, I, I've been painting from since since I was a kid. And yeah, when I was like I don't know, like thirteen, something like that, I started like collecting uh, magic cards, you know, and. Um, Warhammer. I started like painting miniatures and things like things like that. Um, like watching all the magazines um, and all the cars and all, all the paintings on on the magazines is when I started like thinking. Then like these paintings are, are are done by 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 someone, you know. And for me, we're like god people, you know. Like it's impossible to to reach that level. Mm. And and yeah, but after that, I started like I continue uh, just painting every day. Um, it was like in, when when I I, I enter like um, not high school but like the, I I made a bachelor degree in fine arts uh, like for five years and when I started it it was like 2011 something like that 2010 uh, I met a girl that was like starting doing digital art so uh, she encouraged me to buy a, a graphic tablet. And and yeah, after that, uh, I started like uh, meeting people from like the digital community, you know, Facebook and everything. Um, and yeah, it was cool. I mean, I started at the at the first, at the, at the first point, uh, moment. I was like sucking a lot, you know. I was like everything was really bad. Everything I did, <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I keep improving and improving and just like watching tutorials and watching other people's work and meeting more guys and having feedback. And until today, that's been like the last three years or four years, I've been focusing on, on digital art. But most of all, like last two years, because before that, I was like um, finishing my career, my, my bachelor degree. And yeah, I didn't have like too much time but yeah, like like two years uh, two years ago, I started like thinking, really thinking about um, focusing on this to to make like a professional life dedicated to to digital art. And that's the story. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely like a lot more opportunity, I think, from the traditional versus the the digital. Uh, was that was that transition like going from being like purely traditional to jumping in digital? Is that a hard transition for you, or did it was it just very kind of exciting? Uh, I don't know. I, I was always uh, the the thing is that I didn't know about digital art until like four years ago. You know, like I didn't even uh, thought about it. You know, so it's still like, fairly new. <laughs> yeah, for me it was it was like I I, I was like uh, I was used to to use like charcoal and pencil and oil painting. I was like doing oil paintings and acrylic painting. And yeah, for me that was like uh, normal. Like normal life was like traditional, traditional art. But then somebody told me like, no, you know that this kind of thing that digital art exists. And I was like, really? And how does it work? And I didn't even know how does the the tablet work. You know, when when I bought my one, I, I was like, but how do you plug this to the computer? You know, I mean. It's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for me it was like. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, and after that, uh, that's the thing that uh, at the first moment it's like very discouraging because uh, uh, the difference between my traditional work and my digital work was so huge. Like my digital work was shit, and 
and yeah, I had it's it's like learning again, you know. But after all, it's just another tool. So it's the same like uh, painting with oil. Uh, you have like different. Um, uh, you have some. I don't know how to say it, but you have handicaps, you know, and then you have like uh, another things that are better than digital art. And digital art is the same. It has like its pros mm -hmm. and its things that are not that cool, you know. Yeah, no, it's uh, you're actually like it, it's it's interesting hearing you say that because that's a lot of what uh, I'm having to deal with now because like I was so like traditionally based that like you know doing the digital I can't mm -hmm. uh, this is such a massive difference and I'm just sitting here like oh uh, it, it's literally like learning to walk again. Yeah, 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 but you know that with the time that I start like to change and you start like knowing all the. Uh, all the tricks, you know, and all the ways to make things easier. And it, it's just, I mean, for me now, it's like I haven't lost that uh, sense uh, using uh, traditional uh, techniques, but now I'm like really used to use digital. And for me, it's like even easier, I think. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I feel like I've become kind of spoiled to a degree <laughs> by it, like having like certain features that can just like overhaul your image, you know, without having to like repaint or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I find myself whenever I'm sketching, like there's certain features that I'm like, God, I wish I could just, uh, you know, warp this thing or something. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I feel like there can be there can be a little bit of a danger at times to. Uh, the the undo button is it can be such like a huge like blessing with digital, but it can also be like a big curse at times because I I was working on a a, a character painting and it was like okay I'm gonna grab this color and be like well if I don't like it I can always readjust it but then I think I'm like well what if I had to just immediately choose you know what the color was for this thing it, I, I don't know you you th there can be like a yeah, but uh, that, for example, uh, uh, in that example you put, for me, I, I always say that for me it's easier to mix colors. Like, I prefer to have uh, uh, some green paint and red paint and, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. instead of using this, like, the the color pick and everything from, from, from Photoshop, for me it's, like, more difficult than traditional painting. Or, or even, like, using the, using the color pick here, I mean, for me it's... Uh, it's even more difficult. Where is the color peak actually? It's like something. Oh, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I sometimes prefer like do the uh, like in traditional painting. It's easier to do the color by myself than than just like making that, you know, or finding it here, you know, in the in the color selector. Uh, uh, use swatches in the in the digital. Do you just like lay out your colors beforehand, or do you just kind of wing it as you go? What? Can, can you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, I was saying, like, since you like like to use like the actual colors, like when you're working digitally, do you ever just lay out your swatches beforehand, or do you just still just kind of use the color picker? I don't know. It depends. I mean, uh, normally, like my color palette and everything, I try to set it up uh, on 3D, like all the lights and everything. And after that, uh, it depends. Uh, Sometimes if I'm like making uh, very small details, I use the color pick. But if I'm like making a, a huge uh, base color or whatever, I try to to make it like by myself. I don't know. It depends. Yeah. I, I don't have like a very straight workflow. Like I do things like this way or this way. I mean, it's just like I think while you are painting, you uh, start like thinking what is the best option in that moment. So it used to used to change. You basically just do do things the best way you think that they can be done, and don't really worry too much about like a specific. Yeah, well, yeah. I, th I think I, that's I think that's smart. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like every piece I do, like I, <laughs> the process is a little different every time. Yeah, yeah, and you don't have to, to be afraid about that. I mean, it's like for example, right now I, I was I was doing like this texture for this column, and instead of putting it like in a in in a layer. Uh, uh, like uh, down here, I just like erase it over it because I don't think I mean this is just going to be a sketch and it's for me. So if I don't have like an art direction or something like that and the work is just for me, I don't take too much care about I, I don't care too much about like layers and everything. Like right now I'm just doing the same. I'm doing like just textures. So all the textures go whatever and then I will like crop them in. Uh, in, in a folder 
and that's all. So yeah, whatever. Uh, let's take a something I was kind of curious about. Like, uh, was your like what was your first job? Like, when when did you really step into the industry and start like you know? Well, actually, I haven't had like my first job yet. <laughs> so the thing is that uh, I started like uh, I started freelancing a year ago. Like, I'm really really new on this. Uh, and yeah, my first works were like uh, novel covers and that kind of things, basically. And after that, like during the summer, I started working for 2D artists, making, I made a tutorial, and then I've been doing like more. Like the last one I've made is going to be released in September this year for a book. And, um, and yeah, and after that, uh, after a THU last year in in September, I I went to Los Angeles, and there I got another job for Imaging Effects. So I did a, another tutorial for Imaging Effects, and yeah, like since that, like all my work has been most of all for magazines and novel covers, basically. But I'm not that. I think I'm more like a concept artist and an illustrator. But well, I mean. I had I, I need the money so <laughs> I do like that novel covers but yeah like right now I'm looking for my first in-house job like my my idea is to to become part of a studio because I think it's like what I need right now to continue improving and everything. Mm -hmm. So you're kind yeah. of in a phase where you're transitioning from freelance to kind of a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. job I guess. I, I think I, I'm hearing you a little bit bad I don't know. Yeah he's been glitching up a little bit there. Am I echoing? Yeah, you've got an echo going. Uh, hang on. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I was just saying, are you, are you at the stage kind of where you're wanting to transition from uh, freelance into like a more like stable, I guess, studio type of position? Mm, I'm not that worried. I mean, I, I'm actually like looking forward for it, you know, because I think that like improvement uh, means always like challenge, you know. So if you are always like scared about what I'm gonna move, you know, I have to leave my country or whatever, maybe move to the United States to work there. I mean, for me it's like for me it's okay. I don't feel like afraid about that or anything. Or I, it's not that I don't feel prepared, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it makes me, uh, it, it's really, I mean, if, if a company hires you, for me, that's it, like, a, a, creates a, a, a lot of respect on me, you know, but um, but it's not, I'm not afraid, you know, about that. So, and, and I think that nobody should be afraid, you know, like, there's a lot of people that always, like, quit or whatever when, when they are still, like, uh, learning because they think that it's impossible, it's like, nobody's going to hire, hire me. Or if they hire me, I'm not gonna be uh, good enough. So I don't know. For me, it's like you don't have to think that way. You know. You have I think that's a good way to learn too. Like being a fish out of water, it'll kind of like force you to step your game up. You know, to rise to that challenge. Yeah. I think you. I think you really address a pretty good point. Like you know, it's it, there's really no point where you're gonna say you know everything is perfect. I'm finally ready. Let's go ahead and just do this thing. You know, like, like you just have to if you want it, just go ahead and do it. And if there's areas you're gonna struggle, just you know, fight through it. Yeah, I think it's like a discovery process, really. Exactly. I mean, if you always if you always wait to be ready, uh, you're gonna miss a lot of things. You know. Yeah. It's not about being ready because you are never going to be ready because you can always be like, okay, but tomorrow I'm going to be better, so maybe let's wait for tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it doesn't work that way. Uh, I, it's the same, for example, I used to play in, like, I was a, a musician before uh, than an artist in my spare time. And, uh, yeah, it was the same, like, when we were going to record, uh, like, uh, an album or whatever, it was always like, but uh, are we sure that we want to record that mm, that songs? Because I think we are making new ones that are, are going to be cooler, you know, so maybe we should wait. And yeah, and because of that, we finally like never record anything. Just <laughs> we made, we made a, an EP like two years ago, and yeah. So I think sometimes you just have to stop mm, waiting, you know, and just do it. 
Yeah, I completely agree. Like, there's, there's never a point, I think, where you're going to look at your work, like, even, like, as an artist or anything like that, and just be like, oh, that was perfect, you know, or whatever. Like, yeah. I mean, I think there'll be moments you realize you did something decent, but, you know, this, you know, or just, like, in regards to absolutely anything, if you want it, just go ahead and do it. Make mistakes, learn by that, and move on. Mm, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, if, if finally there is a company that hires you and they, they like, uh, I don't know, they reject you, just, like, continue working. I mean, you can always improve. Mm -hmm. Or if, I, if, if, if you just, like, send your portfolio and they say no, don't think that it's just because of your work because sometimes it's also because of whatever, visas or they have more people or... Mm -hmm. There are like a lot of things that is not just about your work, yeah. so it's not cool to think that you are not good enough when a, when a company doesn't hire you. So yeah, I mean, it might be like just looking for something stylistically different too. Like it might not have been your skill per se, but you know, just the type of aesthetics they're 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 looking yeah. at. Exactly. So so yeah, I mean, um, actually, it's a it's a good way also to maybe if if you can keep keep contact with that company, just to ask uh, what are they actually looking for. If they say no to you, like, where can I improve, you know? That's always nice. I don't know. Definitely. So what are you looking to, uh, like, when you get into a studio, like, is there a specific position that you're wanting? Uh, well, I mean, I think for me, like, the be what suits the best is, like, being a concert artist. Mm. Like, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I if I could work as an illustrator, maybe. I think I'm more like, I'm, I, I think I, I will focus like being concert artist before than anything else. Mm. And yeah, like right now my dream job will be like industrial light and magic. So I'm, <laughs> I'm focusing a lot on that, but yeah, it's like really difficult. So I don't know, let's see if maybe in a couple of years or five years, <laughs> I'm good enough to, to be there. Oh, I'm sure you can get there for sure. You seem like you're pretty dedicated. Hmm. The, uh, ah, shoot. Was, like, what, did, did you say you went to, like, art school or did you? Yeah, I did. I did... went to, like, I started in uh, an art high school. Um, and then I, yeah, I, I made, at the university, a uh, four four year uh, degree on, on fine arts mm -hmm. from 2010 to 2014, and then I made another year of like a, um, I don't know how to say it, but it's like an end degree project, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's about yeah, like making a project about something you you want to focus on, and I made it about digital art. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that's. So like, what was the what was the learning curve like whenever you were trying to like? I mean, I don't know. I've heard kind of like mixed things about like the ideas of like going to art school and trying to like teach yourself. And of course, there's a lot of both that like intertwine whenever you're you know specifically in art school. So actually, when I was on on art school, I didn't have like too much time to think about myself. So so yeah, I was like pretty focused on on what I was doing there, like traditional painting and everything. Mm. Uh, um, and yeah, it was like in 2013, like finishing uh, like in the, the last months of 2000, uh, 2013 when I started like working for myself at home. But yeah, I mean, my uh, I, I sometimes think that I lost a lot of time on my, on my art school. But then it's like, well, maybe I didn't, I didn't waste that much, you know. Like, uh, I don't know. It's it's some. I have like mixed feelings about it because they don't like prepare you too much for the for real life, you know. It's like you are like painting for four years, and then you go out and it's like, okay, so what I got just like <laughs> a, a bunch of uh, portraits or whatever and nothing else. I don't have any kind of experience, work experience or, or anything. Um, and to be honest, like I mean, like there are like 900 um, students every year 
and it's impossible to, to for all the, for all of them to, to have success as a traditional artist, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, for me, in some kind of way, I have like the luck that I was lucky because I I decided to move to digital art and do it before going before I mean yeah before finishing the career, you know, <coughs> finishing the the degree. Because like right now, that I have like a lot of uh, um, a lot of um, friends and everything that was studying with me, and now they they are like doesn't have anything, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was like during the last years of of the career of the of the degree when I started like really focusing about me and doing my personal things and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm sure you learned like a lot. What? Lot. Getting an M there. Can you repeat? I I didn't I didn't hear that. One second. I think he's gonna echo. If you turn your mic on and off, Travis, like that works for me. <laughs> Any better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just saying, I'm sure you learned like a lot in that time period. Like, I mean, well, like <clears throat> I think that's something that a lot of people like to just go to college struggle with in general is that, you know, when, when they go, they have someone kind of holding their hand for, like, four years. Not that they're not working hard, but, you know, there's a lot of, you got a ton of instructors, you have a lot of other students that are with you, and then, you know, when you are done, you all of a sudden you're, like, left with either the amount of work that you've done in your lap, and you're just like, okay, what do I do with this? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, that's the problem with, like, at least here in Spain, that's the problem with university. It's like, um, like teachers doesn't give a shit about you and uh, your work and it's like just uh, yeah let's paint like for four years and don't think about what is going to happen next you know so there's a lot of people that is having like a lot of good marks on university because they are like focusing a lot on university but yeah I mean that marks doesn't uh, I mean there is no point in having good marks if then you don't move your work and you don't you don't have work already, you know. I mean, for working in imaging effects, no one asked me for my marks on university, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something they're they're concerned with. Probably more just interested in like the actual quality of your portfolio. <laughs> exactly. So the thing is that I decided instead of having good marks, I decided to start in like building my portfolio before going outside, you know, of, of the university. And that's why after that, I I was like. I started like very fast uh, receiving job um, after university. So yeah, like right now, I mean, I know a lot of people that is struggling with that because they don't have like the level in digital art to start in concept art. But yeah, I mean, they are like looking for a job and they can't because they don't have that portfolio. So now they are like building that that portfolio. Yeah, they kind um, of double back. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, the thing is that it's like it's they don't at the university here they don't give you any kind of uh, professional experience or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really up to you how do you um, go out after university and um, um, how do you manage to to find a job. You know, it's like they don't give you any kind of uh, any kind of clue about how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually like similar to me. Like when I was going for a fine art degree, I kind of I realized that like early on, and just decided not to even like finish it out. Like I, I got a degree for graphic design, but then like I was gonna get a fine art, and then after one semester, I was like, well, I'd probably be better off just building a quality portfolio at this point and studying, you know, things tailored to the digital. And like, yeah. I think too, like for because like typically like they're they're just teaching like traditional artists. And it's already such a difficult task, I think, like if you're going to be purely traditional to to kind of find consistent work, you know. Yeah, yeah and the thing is that, uh, I mean, for me at least, uh, I got to a point that I'm, I understood that I, I didn't need my, my marks for anything. So I just focused on learning the much I can, like about composition, color, lightning, uh, whatever, you know. Really gain uh, the fundamentals, yeah, but but not giving a shit about uh, like marks or uh, getting well with uh, with my I mean, be friend of my teachers or whatever. 
Mm. So, so yeah, like right now, at some point, I think that my mm, my degree was a uh, lot of time. But on the other hand, I think that I learned some uh, a couple of things that I think that are very important for anyone that is uh, now like dedicated to this. Yeah. Like there is a lot of things of traditional art that are really important for digital art also, like composition, you know, uh, all that stuff. And even like uh, art history, I think it's really, really important to understand how uh, art has been like developing during the years. Mm -hmm. That's actually like the one class I actually enjoyed was my art history class, like going from like Renaissance to modern, like seeing that evolution. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and yeah, I mean, if you are able then to to apply that, like to 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 show that in your work, that's really, really nice. I mean, to, to be able to show that you have that knowledge, it's really important. And it's something that actually, like, companies uh, really like. The fact that you are able to not only to work in digital art, but that you have, like, all the base on traditional art. That's really cool. Mm. And I really encourage, like, everyone to do that, like, to try to learn a little bit of traditional traditional art before digital yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and for those of you that are listening, we definitely don't discourage, like, you know, like, even pursuing, like, a fully traditional career. There's, like, a, one guy who I follow pretty pretty closely is uh, Mike Buckus. Mm -hmm. I mean, in order for you to, of course, make a career, I think, traditionally, you probably just have to be crazy. But, <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's exactly, like, what he is. Like, he's, he's nuts, you know, so, like, being, I don't know, if if you are that if you want to do traditional you can do it you just gotta find a way to make it work and it's gonna be a bit difficult I imagine because like marketing that is a lot harder I think yeah probably. well I think it's I think it's really just comes down to like you know there's there's something I was thinking about the other day where it's like there's what everyone else is doing and then there is like what you would like to do and if you're the only one that wants to do like a specific thing, technically you're your only competition, so that that is the easy bit. But the hard bit is that nobody else is, you know, nobody else is doing it. It's the same time. It's the same. It's like that's the benefit and the weakness of it. And you have to figure out a way to market. You have to find a way to like sell that new thing because you know the the employers are looking for something, and then you're doing something totally different. So you have to find a way to. Mm -hmm. To pitch that, I guess you know, like, hey. <laughs> yeah, but I think with like efficient marketing and like being really smart about it, eventually, like, if you become known for that thing, then people come to you. Yeah, um, but in any case, like, you say that like it's really difficult to be a traditional artist, but uh, I mean, I think that everything is difficult, but nobody mm, mm, told us that was going to be easy. You know, it's like. I really like when there's people that tells me like I want to do this, but it's really difficult. It's like it's like they're like already trying to avoid it just because it's difficult and it's like an excuse, you know. It's like I'm not gonna do it because just because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Like okay, so just go and fuck yourself because your life is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I completely agree. I agree. Like, if it's not hard, then what's the point, right? It's not, you're not going to appreciate it as much, and it's not going to be as fun. Like, it's not giving you, like, a, a psychological, you know, challenge, you know. If, yeah. it, was, if it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be worth it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was the same. I, I, I can tell you a story. I, 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 have a, I have a coaching that, that wants to be a, she loves, I mean, she's, a, she's studying for being a, a nurse. Um, and she loves like uh, football and everything. Um, and I was like, then I mean, if you like to be a nurse and you are like studying nursery, and you like football, why don't you do like something related to um, sports and medicine? You know, something like related to that, and maybe become part of the uh, medical team of a football team. You know. And she was like, yeah, but that's, like, really difficult. And I was like, yeah, nobody told you that this was going to be easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's always like that. Like, I I know a lot of people that is not doing what they want just because it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I, I personally feel like if, 
that that difficulty factor can be kind of fun. I mean, yeah, it's a struggle, but at the same time, it's like, why would you want it to be easy? Like, yeah, yeah. if you're gonna dedicate your life to it, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like I mean, we're all like, you know, you really want to go into some dark places here, but we're all gonna be, you know, dead one day. I mean, if you you want to do what you want to do, if and yeah, just do it. I mean, that's there's no point in not doing the thing that you really want to like, you know, either dedicate your life to or because just because it's hard or there's some kind of like, you know, system you're worried about paying your bills or whatever else that it shouldn't really be a factor. Yeah. I don't know. I think that, I mean, it's, it's that like we are, we just live for one time, you know, and there is no point in just having a normal life like, no, I mean, I wanted to be a musician, but it's very difficult, so I'm just going to have a normal job, um, pay my bills for the rest of my life, and then when I'm 80, 80 years old, I, I just want to think that my life has been uh, a fucking shit, you know, because <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, if that's the view you have of your life, uh, okay, have fun, you know, but I'm not going to do that. So, At that point, like, I would just be like, what am, I, what am I even waiting for? Like, I might as well just check out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't imagine that, being, like, 90-something, just, like, you know, laying around in bed, can't get up or anything like that, and you're just, you're like, oh, my gosh, I just lived 90 years of my life just to get, just to pay my bills and be relatively comfortable. And then I, I use him, this guy as an example a lot, but everybody knows him, but, you know, Stan Lee, you know, he, he, he is he's old but he looks so happy and it's because ever like look how much he's like affected people like you see what you see like what he's done like with you know all this the superhero stuff and he does say like you know I, I I did this you know like everything I set out to do I did that yeah you know, like that's a that's a special feeling I'm, I have no doubt and that's probably why he's lived so long too. Is just you know, if you're if you have a reason to get up every morning, even at that age, you know, you're still pioneering something. Like, mm -hmm. th yeah, to me, that's the ultimate like rationale for going ahead and pursuing what you really want to pursue. Because at at the end of your life, like the only thing that's going to matter is everything that you didn't do, and you're just going to be thinking like, you know, there's nothing after this potentially. Like, why didn't I just go for this? You know, sure, I lived comfortably doing something that I didn't really care about. But you know, it, it would have been much more of a, a thrilling life to pursue something I actually that actually mattered to me. I think there's a big difference between like comfort and like pleasure, and the the idea of like you know you take like a great amount of pleasure in your work versus just being like or pleasure in your life rather than just being comfortable. The, the there is a very fine line between the two, and and basically it just comes down to you know, is this person happy or you know it's. But yeah, he's. I think I think Stanley is a very big example of that. Just somebody who didn't just do things just to take care of what they needed to, like pay their bills or whatever, and wanted to, uh, you know, make their life have some kind of meaning. <laughs> yeah, but in any case, I mean, for example, for me, I I've never done uh, something in my life that I don't like. I mean, for me, it has been always like. If I don't like to do something, I'm not going to do it. To do it, you know, like so. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, so sometimes I, I think like, okay, uh, I have to pay my bills. Okay, how I'm gonna pay them? You know, mm. so I think it's like, okay, I, I, I want to pay them like doing what, what I really like. That it's painting. Okay, so I have to be like really cool and really good uh, at painting to be able to have a job that allows me to pay my bills just painting. So it's about that. I mean, but if you think that you don't have like the level to to like pay your bills just painting, the only thing you have to do is like continue painting and trying to improve until you go to that level, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I see it. Sort of like an ultimate motivator. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the, the way I figure it too is like, you know, I would rather uh, Fail at something I love than succeed at something that I hate, you know, or I don't care about. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Completely. Hmm. So I guess shifting to like a technical side, I've just been kind of like admiring your your process here. Do you, do you typically like is uh, do you do like a lot of three uh, D and photo bashing in your work, or do you kind of mix bag it? 
or do you normally like kind of keep it more traditional? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for this kind of uh, works, I use like a lot of 3D and uh, photo basing. Uh, normally, like the um, uh, like the last uh, steps, it's more like about painting. I'm not sure if we will have time to see that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when I'm trying to do like a very fast work, I use more like photographs and everything. Just because, I mean, this kind of work that is totally like for me, it's personal work. Uh, I just want like to, to put it out of my head. You know, it's like I had this idea like yesterday at night. So I made the 3D just to make it as fast as I can and go to to another painting, you know? So that's kind of like build the foundation of it and then paint over top, kind of like, sort of? What? Uh, like with what you're doing now, like, uh, is, like a, is are you just kind of like laying the base of the painting and then like you're going to paint over it or...? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm like doing textures and everything, and then if I need like some kind of detail or whatever, I will paint over it. Like for example, in this blanket, I will like redo it, like painting over it. But I made like this. Uh, I made it in 3D to know how how the light was going to bounce on it. You know, like you can see it, like this red is bouncing there in the legs and also like in the legs of of the statue and everything. So yeah, but after uh, I mean, after like all the photo basing and everything, I will start like, painting over it. Like mm. for example, I don't have to touch this or I don't have to touch this, but maybe in other part, in other parts, yeah. So I don't know. It depends. But normally, like the painting, the painting process on this is more like for blending all the textures and everything and the and the 3D base more than like painting something completely. You know? Yeah. Kind of blending it into each other. Yeah, exactly. Do you ever think about like, a, or do you ever try uh, like <clears throat> after doing a piece like this, where you know you go in and you do like a lot of like the three D, and then you go and you do the paint over. Do you ever try like uh, you know ignoring the three D on the next piece and just trying to paint it straight away? Yeah, I made it. I, I made it sometimes, but I don't know. I mean, I think there is a moment that I I don't I don't need like to to show anything to anyone, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to, like, show that I have, like, good skills just painting. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like, I feel, like, really comfortable doing this uh, when I like to do, like, fast paintings. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like, okay, I just want to chill out and paint for days, and uh, I, I will not use, like, any kind of 3D base or photo basing, you know? But normally, if, if I feel like that, what I do is, like, actually, I go directly to traditional art, you know? I mean, if I want to paint, like, everything, I will I, I will rather, like, uh, take some oils and do a, do a painting that, that go into the, to the computer and, and do a piece here, like, in, in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But I just... I think you sometimes like to switch like that. <laughs> what? I said, I bet that's kind of like therapeutic to go back to oils sometimes. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. I was mostly just curious, like, I was, the reason I was asking that was because I was like, I don't know, thinking about, <clears throat> I, I always, like, every time I, like, change my process, like, if, if it's, like, a, say, if I was doing, like, a 3D thing, I, I imagine, like, the mindset is very different than, you know, just painting outright. You know, so if you went, I, I feel like, it would be an interesting way to learn, I guess, by, like, you know, doing, like, something with, like, the 3D and then going and trying to paint something without 3D, like, any, any additional. Yeah, totally. Uh, actually, I mean, I think there is, uh, there is something, like, uh, really important is to uh, try to make, like, still life painting, you know, like, um, life painting, maybe, like, take a, an iPad or whatever, or if you, if you have a tablet, or a laptop and go outside and try to paint uh, digitally, you know, but try to paint something from real life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an exercise that really helps a lot. And it's really cool. Definitely. So yeah, but it's like something therapeutic, you know, and, and really <laughs> helps you to, to improve a lot. Yeah, it's, that, that was something that I learned pretty early. Like, that's what I started with whenever I was like, 
beginning my digital work was like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do like a ton of studies because I don't know what I'm doing. So that way I don't have to worry about what I'm drawing or painting. I can just like, I was pretty confident in my ability to make it accurate. So I was just like, I need to figure out just what I'm doing with digital. You know, and if I can, if I can understand, I guess, Photoshop, then, you know, but yeah, still life's helped a lot. So you learn a lot about how light works, how color works, things like that. And all that is just super important. I mean, for me, I mean, all of that, like all that paintings and everything, I already made it when I was at university. So mm -hmm. after university, I was like a little bit uh, like, uh, I don't know, but yeah, I was full of that. I was like, don't. So I was like, okay, now I want to do like photo bass for, <laughs> for a yeah. couple of years. Like I never want to paint a still life again. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I re sometimes I really like to go back to that. But yeah, some I was like, sometimes I'm like, okay, I, I already did a lot of this. So I don't know. It's sometimes something kind of I do it more like I, I used to do it like in summer, you know. If I'm if I'm out like in a in a trip or something, I don't have my computer. I I use a lot of my sketchbook, and yeah, that's like the moment of the year when I do my uh, like still paintings, like still life and everything. So like uh, th this was something else that we were talking about, like kind of going back to what we're talking about with like. Uh, you know, goals and like you know, this whole Stan Lee conversation. Do you have like any like personal projects or uh, anything like that that you are? I, yeah, I started one. I started like um, an IP a year ago. I, I can show you like a second. Cool. Uh, it's about some glowing stones. Uh, oh, I, I wrote it back. Shit. No. <laughs> Like, so your computer's going kind of slow today? Yeah, it's going so slow. Ugh. Well, I, I can like continue and then I will show you. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Let's see if this doesn't like broke now. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, I, so, I might have your art station up on mine. Like, I could probably pull the screen. Oh, is that where you're going? Right, and then, uh, I mean, there is like, uh, there are some paintings of like some kind of stones that are glowing at night. Something like that, maybe you can see them. Like, yeah, here, let me... Uh, I'll so, that, that was a project that I started like uh, a year ago, more or less. And yeah, it was like, it has like a lot of, uh, I don't know, it, it worked like really well in the community. I showed it to, to some people like... Is the one you're talking about? What? I th I've got your art station up as a... Uh... No, sure. Can you see my screen? Uh, wait a second, because like this is crashing a lot. This is going like <laughs> so. <laughs> like if you see my screen right now, it's between Photoshop and Internet. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a desert scene with like uh, you've got it like one a day with like a girl, and then the other one's like at night with uh, like. Yeah, uh, exactly. This yeah, yeah, gotcha. It's really cool. The thing is that shit. This is fuck. This is totally out. So um, yeah, the thing is that I started that like uh, on like on December of 2014, something like that, like a year and, and a half ago. Uh, and uh, and yeah, like people. I like the one that you have in the ocean. <laughs> I get a lot and a lot. Why if we make like a we make a project out of this, you know, like you and me, we can start like a video game or and show it to and I was always like, no. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. After that, um, I like I, I continued like making more and there was actually a company that contacted me to make uh to make uh, like a project and show it to producers. But after some time we didn't sign any contract thing and it's still like being very, very weird. And I quit. <laughs> I mean, I took all my uh, I took all my work and, and went uh, like ran away from that. And yes, yeah, since that I stopped it a little bit and continue like making my own portfolio. But yeah, I would really like to to go back to to those paintings and continue the story because I already have like a like a story for for that characters and that uh, like 
environments and everything. Yeah, it looks like she's on like a pretty like epic journey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's like really inspired in in journey and in, ah, oh, what's the name? I yeah, it, it, like a, it was a, an Spanish IP that was called Rhyme. I think like now it's stopped. I know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they are gonna finally finish the uh, the video game. Mm. But yeah. Mm. Uh, that board, like, like right now, I, I it's a stop. I, I don't have like too much more uh, personal projects because I'm like really focused on my on my on my own portfolio. So yeah, I would like right now my my project is to make a portfolio, you know, for different companies, and yeah, kind of get your foot in the door. <laughs> yeah, I really like the stone concept. It's it, it's it's very interesting. Uh, I mean, thank you. I've never, I've never really seen like someone do. I don't know, just something with like rocks the way you're doing it. Like it's it's almost got like a weird like sci fi vibe to it too with like the higher like the glowing glyphs and stuff, especially the ocean one. <laughs> like I keep coming back to it. Like, it just looks so cool. Yeah, there's like some kind of a I, I don't know, I feel like there's like more of a story to these stones. You know, just because like the each one each picture we look at with like it when it, the light scheme changes, like uh, you know, they glow at night. And they, I, I don't know. I feel like there's there's something that kind of like I mean, maybe connects them, you know. So it's it, it's it's interesting because like just you know you look at this and you say, well, th I think this is kind of like a, a lesson. In like I don't know, maybe going to be working on an IP or something. But when you look at just an initial painting, like say uh, you looked at just the one at night, and if it was by itself, you're like, okay, some glowing rocks at night. But then when you look at a few more of them, and you know, you see the let's say the daylight, and then you see it at night, and you know they're all glowing. It's like you start to the wheels start to turn, and you think, okay, so there's more of a story to this just by the fact that there's each of these rocks have similar glyphs on them. They glow at night, and there's uh, it's a very interesting, like, ambiguous way to kind of hint at a larger world or something's going on. Kind of like a struggle too, because it's like the each one is at a vastly different location. So this one person is traveling to each of these basically markers looking for these stones. <laughs> like it's already like an implied yeah. narrative. Yeah. It's very yeah, it's something like that. And and you know, actually, I mean, I can tell you something. It's like uh, it was everything was uh, not a mistake, but I didn't plan it. You know, like when I started like the first, the first painting, I was just doing like the day version. And I say, I, I mean, during the day version, I I, I thought, well, like, okay, what if I just turn the levels down, you know? I made it, like, darker I, and put some blue tones on it and make it glow, you know? And it wasn't, like, just a trial. And then I put that trial on Facebook and everyone liked, liked it. And, and after that, I was like, okay, maybe I should, like, push this a little bit further, you know, and make more and really think about a story about this. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. But I, I don't know. <laughs> I like I mean, it. I, I didn't know. I, like it. I, I think that it was going like like it, it was it going to have like that success, you know. So yeah. yep. Yeah. I don't know. Now it's now it's in, in a standby, and maybe I will do something similar this summer or in a couple of months. Let's see. If I have some time, I will go back to that. Yeah. No, I'll be very interested to see where you go with it, for sure. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see like, what's going on with it. <laughs> it's always my favorite aspect, is like to see like what people, like their creative ideas. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. I mean, like, uh, I think, like, for example, Danny Lubisi talks a lot, about, a, a lot about that, about the fact that the, the video game industry and the, the film industry, it's like always... Uh, rebuting, you know, like the same, um, the same topics and the same I IPs, you know, mm -hmm. um, and in some kind of way, it's always nice to have like fresh air, you know, and have new ideas and new people trying to develop uh, different IPs, you know, and different stories that are not always the same, you know. So yeah, that's why he has made it. something go against that grain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he has made his own character, and now he's pushing it and trying to like uh, make it like something unique, you know. 
Yeah, um, yeah like I think that reboot of something. It's actually something totally new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah Something totally because I mean, yeah, the sound is really, like really bad. Do, do you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I was just letting um, you let you continue. So the, the thing is that I mean, if you look back to last year, what 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 were like the the most famous film la last year? Let's say like Jurassic World. Or well, that was from 2014, right? Or 2015? Not really uh, sure. That's 2000. Yeah. yeah so like we that. have like we have again like Jurassic World, Star Wars, and it's like it's the same that we have 20 years ago, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't know. This is this is crashing a lot. Uh, my Photoshop is not working, but whatever. <laughs> Then you like so uh, then you get like this interesting. This is something that actually that we've been talking about like a lot lately. Is that uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love like superhero movies, you know. But because yeah. of so many of them, you know, like sometimes it can get to be a little bit like it, it can be so refreshing when you see something that isn't a a superhero film or something that's just a completely new idea. Yeah, I mean. I, I also love them, you know. Um, for example, for me, when when Star Wars Seven came out, I was freaking out. I mean, I'm a really really fan of Star Wars, and I love the film, you know. For me, it was like uh, really cool. And uh, I mean, like everyone has uh, his opinion, you know. But for me, it was really nice. Um, but yeah, on the other hand, I I really think that sometimes we need like uh, we also need like new things, you know. I mean, it's fine to. It's fine to review things that uh, work uh, like uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but at some point you need to do like new stuff too. Like, it's important to keep, to keep it fresh, you know. So and that's for example something that Marvel is now doing, like uh, making like new um, new superhero movies, you know, like instead of making another Iron Man movie or that they are going to make, actually. But, but I don't know, like putting new superheroes like Black Panther or whatever, or Doctor Strange, I think it's a good move in that way. Yeah, it could try to capture some non-traditional aesthetics, some of the weirder characters, for sure, yeah. like smart. The Doctor Strange thing seems very, a lot more... I'm very, very excited for that one, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool. He's very out there character. Yeah, I think that like not only Marvel but Disney itself, uh, it's doing things like really well. You know, like, like the same with Lucasfilm and I don't know Lucasfilm and Marvel. They are really understanding what does the the viewer wants, mm -hmm. and they are they are going in the right way, in my opinion. I don't know. Let's see like how how does uh, Star Wars it uh, turns, but. I think it's gonna be cool. I mean, I I don't have any kind of, I'm not afraid of that, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like when 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 they announced that Disney was buying Lucasfilm in 2013, people were like, "Fuck, we are gonna have like Zac Efron, you know, like Zac Efron in Star Wars or whatever. Like it's going to be now a, <laughs> I don't know, like High School Musical, but in a Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Of course, it, it was not going to be like that, you know. Yeah. And now I think that it was like a really, really nice movement in in a, I mean, in a economical and company way of seeing it, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, as far as sheer marketing power, you can't really go wrong with this thing. <laughs> oh, no, it's working. I think. What is it? No, my I mean my my Photoshop was like crushed for oh. is, uh, ten minutes or <laughs> five minutes. Are you able to see his uh, screen, Travis? Uh, not at the moment. I okay. see a little astronaut head. Oh yeah, I think maybe your screen share went off. Uh, I think it was on actually. I'm not oh. sure. Let's yeah. see. It's because it's going really, really slow. Mm. Gotta love technology. Ducks. <laughs> but no, I, I completely agree with like a lot of the things you're you're, you're saying. Like with the like, it's 
I, I think that was another reason why, like, Star Wars, for example, was so big, was because, I mean, yeah, it's, it is Star Wars, it's always going to be big, but there hadn't been one in a while, and when you have all the superhero movies and stuff, and they're basically, like, ruling the film industry, you, then Star Wars comes out, and it's like, oh, here is a huge movie that isn't what, you know, that isn't the, the typical thing that we see for the most part, you know, and... It, it was that's just, why, like, Mad Max blew up so big, too, is because, like, it was such a breath of fresh air amidst, like, yeah. you know, just the onslaught yeah. of, like, typical, like, Hollywood fanfare at the time. Yeah, yeah I mean, already, like, for me, Mad Max was actually, like, the best film of last year. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, it was just so refreshing. Like, it was just completely, it didn't look anything like uh, anything else on the market. Like, it was just, like, uh, I needed that. I needed that breather. <laughs> For me, it was a lot between. Uh, it was between that and the uh, Ex Machina movie. Um, that that movie. <clears throat> uh, th- there was something really interesting about uh, that movie. I found because it was it, it was more of like a psychological thing, and there was more that was just like it was well acted, it was well shot, and there was a lot of things that were really like planned out well in it. That it, it wasn't like movies like that. Uh, like for example, another one for example, like the Revenant that just came out. Um, yeah, they're not like blown up blockbusters. It's always yeah, good. they're not huge. They're more intimate films, and I like to see like people bring like you, you can tell that the person has like a passion for that thing, you know. And the it, even though they may not be a huge blockbuster, they get like a pretty big following. Just like like it's like a cult following, and. I don't know. Those are the movies that I like to. Is that, this actually gives me a good question for you, Pablo. Is, is there a particular uh, feel that you would love? Okay. Pablo, you had to rejoin. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna ask, like, since we're on like the topic of like the industry and everything, like, is there a particular like uh, uh, job or field that you would want to get in, like films or video games? Is there like a particular area that you're like particularly interested in? Uh, what can you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, I was just saying, like, since we've been talking about films and stuff, like, I was just curious, like, uh, for you, career-wise, is there like a particular field that you're interested, like, most interested to get in, like, doing concept art for films or games or? I think, I mean, after like all the feedback that people has gave to me during the last year, I think I'm more into film than video game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm open to everything right now because. After all, what I want is just to learn and to improve. But yeah, I mean, for me, like, I think in my way of working and um, like all my compositions and everything, I think like I'm more near from um, like cinema and, and films than, than video games. But yeah, actually, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not that sure about that, you know. But it's what people tells me. So tells me so. So yeah, I think I think they are they are they are right. I don't know. <laughs> Still kind of figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think too much about that, you know, like because uh, I like both uh, fields, you know, like video games and film. But yeah, like, I think that film could fit better with me. I think, or I could fit better with film. Do you also have any interest in like comics, or is that like a, that's not so much a thing? Yeah, not at all. Actually, I mean, I love I love comics, and I really, really respect people that like uh, makes comics because I think it's something like really difficult. Actually, like when I was uh, when I was young, I used like to 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 try to make my own comics, you know, but it was like so difficult. I I didn't like make more than a page or something like that because. I was like, shit, it's like too much drawing for me. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of drawing for sure. Like, it's, uh, Social arts, tricky. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of going off on a tangent, but it was something that uh, I was talking with a friend about was like the difference between like doing designs for comics and doing designs for, uh, you know, things like games or movies where it's like, you know, with, with a game, you know, you can just, you can, after you get the concept done, you can do all these, like, little individual details and trinkets and stuff, and you go and you do the 3D render, and then you animate it. And then in comics, though, it's so difficult to do something that's, like, a really intricate and very detailed design because you have to draw it so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, like, I don't know, comic and animation, for me, are like forbidden uh, fields, you know, like, <laughs> I, I simply can't, I can't, you know, I mean, <laughs> no, no, no way, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wish I could work in the comic industry, you know, but for me it's impossible. <laughs> Or in the animation industry, man. Yeah, like a really, I would feel like just like a strong amount of patience. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember, Pablo, remember earlier what we were talking about with the the idea of like you know saying you know it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, this is different. This is different. <laughs> they always say it's different. The only exception. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, hard. no, but I I will say it again, like. Everything, I mean, like, nothing is impossible but working in the animation industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, animation would be, like, so hard. It would take yeah. so much patience, and, you know, it's, it's just crazy to watch I think people. that's why, like, so much animation goes, like, 3D now, is just to, to lighten that load. <laughs> It's amazing, just like I have like so much respect for like a like say Aaron Blaze, like you know we talked to him where he like the old school Disney movies, you know, like with the two D animation, all the drawing and the just the movement and stuff that goes into oh gosh, it's so much work. Yeah, it's crazy. It's really really cool. I mean, if you have uh, like the skills to work like that, uh, you can tell that you're going to be a, a good painter. You know, I actually have a friend. That, that, yeah, I mean, he's, like, working on his own uh, animation, and that has made him, like, really, really, really well drawing because he has, like, everything in his head, like, every pose and all the an anatomic uh, uh, stuff, you know, like, he really, really uh, knows what he's doing always. And just because he has, like, been repeating the same drawings for like a thousand of times, you know, just for his animation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's really cool. Oh, definitely. Well, I guess we're at about the top of the hour. Uh, is there anything else, like Cole, that we want to maybe, like, you know, cover while we're... Well, not top of the hour, but the, the top of the hour for the interview. Your choice. <laughs> I can continue here, like, for three hours or... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I personally would really love to, but I have to, you know, they have that nah, Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we decided to celebrate it today because yesterday, you know, everybody's out like doing like the dinner thing. Yeah, in Spain, it, in Spain, it was on Saturday actually. I think, yeah, it was Saturday or Sunday, and was yeah, yeah, it was or last week something. I can't remember, but yeah, I mean. Uh, it wasn't today. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> uh, I I don't think I have any more unless uh, Pablo. Do you have any uh, words of uh, I guess advice or wisdom or for for artists starting out? I guess. Uh, basically, it's like what I say at, at the first moment. Like I I always uh, that that's something I always say. Like I I don't consider myself like a good teacher, you know, but but a good motivator instead. Because like when they always like told me to make tutorials or things like that, I feel like shit. But I'm not good enough, you know, to teach anything to anyone. So why why do they ask me for that? But but yeah, like. I, uh, in in the other hand, I think that I can like really motivate a lot of people, a, a lot like people. So yeah, what I always say like to people when that is starting is just uh, don't be afraid about like anything. I mean, probably you will have like everything are excuses. Like I don't have money, or I don't have time, or my parents doesn't like what I do, or I should get a real job, and it's like <laughs> all that shit. I mean. I know people that doesn't have money. I know people that doesn't have time, but they don't sleep or whatever. But, I mean, if you really like something, and uh, those excuses are going to, like, are going to go away, you know what I mean? So just go for it and don't be afraid of anything because everything is possible if you work hard and you believe on that, you know? it's like, it's like uh, Finally, it's just about... Painting every day and working every day, or sculpting if you make 3D, whatever. 
for example, for me, it was like very hard when I started with digital painting like four years ago, and I was uh, looking to guys like Kevin Mercier or Lucas Hedge that now are like 20 years old, 21 year old, and now I can call them my friends, you know, but the thing is that when I started and I didn't know them in person, I was like, shit, they are, they are younger than me, and they are already like working, and, and, and they are like doing a lot of cool stuff. And I thought to myself, like, okay, if I want to, to have their level, uh, I have, like, to paint uh, uh, the double, you know, than, than them. I mean, if they spend, like, four hours, I have to spend eight hours. And that's what I did. I mean, and I, and I still do it. I used to paint, like, seven hours or eight hours a day just mm -hmm. to reach that level as fast as I can. Because Being I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I can't wait to be like two thousand, uh, like I don't know, two thousand eighteen to have a job. No, I want it now. You know, not not in two years, or in three years. So for that, I have just to sleep less and and just work more. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, awesome. when you when you really like it, uh, it's not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. so, just don't be timid about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like what you were saying earlier, where it's just, uh, you know, there are no excuses. If you want it, just do it. Find a way. Uh, with things like, you know, like you got YouTube, you got like all these other like tutorials, Gumroad. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's easier today, I think, than any other time I mean, to get in there. <laughs> and at some point, I also think it like, People tell him like, damn, but you are so cool and whatever. And I like, I don't feel like I'm. I'm not that cool. I could be like way better. But mm -hmm. when people ask me if it has been hard to to reach this level, I, I don't think so. I mean, for me, it hasn't been hard. I mean, I look back in time. I don't think like, damn, I spent like my life painting, and it has it it it, it has been a hell, you know. And no, for me, it's like I really enjoyed every day that I. Have been painting since I was born, and it hasn't been hard to to come to that level. And I know that in the in the next years it's going to be even more awesome. You know, so yeah, as long as you actually get up and paint, inevitably, you know, you'll yeah, yeah. For me, it's like right. sometimes I'm playing video games and I think like, damn, I, I could be painting. You know, like for me right now, I I have more fun painting than playing video games or whatever. So yeah, that's like really cool. And if you don't like painting like that much, uh, I think you have a problem. <laughs> I mean, if you want to to get a job in the industry, like in a really nice position, like because there is people that is like, no, yeah, I like painting, but just as a hobby, okay. So then it's just a hobby, you know. But don't think like further than that. But if you really like, if you really want to make a living about this and everything, work hard and enjoy it because if you don't enjoy it, there is no way to, to make it. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's actually something I kind of noticed with what you said there is like a, a, when I really started like doing painting for many, many hours a day, like six to eight hours a day, eventually like after the first month, month or so, like it, it, it replaced certain things that I used to like, you know, like video games and stuff that I used to occupy like my time to have fun, you know, like my relaxation time. It actually like replaced uh, a lot of those hours, and uh, like it just became like painting became my, you know, when I get home from work, it's like, oh yeah, I just want to relax and paint. Now it used to be like, oh, I want to play some video games, get my mind off it, but now it's like, I want to go create something. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. That's why what, what I was talking about. Yeah, that's the point when you really know that it's. Uh, Totally easy to work in the industry, you know, because you really like it, and there is no, uh, the, it's not a problem to spend like uh, eight hours per day or nine hours. I mean, if you got to that level, it's really easy because it's just about time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's actually really, really good advice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you, Pablo, for uh, you know doing this with us, coming on, and you know talking with us and. Thank Showing you. Off of work here. <laughs> and I'm sorry we, because of like my my Photoshop is always crashing and everything because it's shit. But whatever. I mean, I hope you could see something. I will try to finish it and, and post it anyway, so you will see it. Finish it. In a couple awesome. of days, maybe. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to it. But yeah, thanks, Pablo. Uh, yeah, thanks man. So much. All right. Finally, thanks, cool. Guys. Talk to you. But... Yeah, uh, we'll catch everyone next time. Uh, keep grinding. All right.